You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming, something to me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Heart of Amethyst, a Callus' Path. So guys, let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy for the next 18 minutes while entertaining you, and let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go, girl. Okay. <clears throat> Alright. Th okay, Th thank you. So we're about to walk in and see Mr. Biscotti again. With nothing else to say, I go up loudly and then enter the shop. The first thing I notice as I enter the shop is the smell of dust. Which is weird, because if there was something Mr. Biscotti hates, that would be dust. But he's probably been too busy attending to the shop and buying supplies to even care about cleaning. Hey, old man! I'm back! Sorry for taking so long! I call out for him, but there's no response. Maybe he went out to buy some supplies. But, that's weird, why would he leave the door unlocked then? I take a sniff around and I notice that I can't smell him. Only his lingering old man scent that has been, that has been impregnated in this place... Impregnated? That has been imp Okay. <laughs> a weird turn of phrase. Now that I look closely, there's a lot of dust and some broken glass on the floor. The books aren't arranged properly, and some important artifacts are missing from the sh uh, from missing from the shelves. Someone entered this place, but who and why? More importantly, what happened to the old man? I desperately move around, lifting every single nook and cranny in the shop, trying to find any clue that would allow me to figure what the hell happened here. But there's nothing, only missing objects. No signs of struggle, no damage aside from two bottles that broke. I keep trying to sniff around, but there are only lingering scents. Nothing revealing. Damn it, what happened here? The drawers, the shelves, even under the desks. Nothing. It doesn't matter how hard I try, there's nothing here. Not a single note, a clue, just an empty shop. I'm about to give up, but then... Of course! I say to myself, walking straight for the second cabinet in the wall. In the wall. I push the heavy object to the side and notice that our secret hiding spot is still there. It's just a hole in the wall, but we used to store any sort of important artifact that we come across. Getting my hand in there, I notice that there's only one thing inside of it. I quickly take it out, noticing that it's a nicely wrapped package with a note attached to it. Inspecting it, it, inspecting it, it seems to be some sort of book, but I'm more interested in the notes that came with it. Unfolding it as fast as I can, I immediately notice that this is Mr. Biscotti's handwriting. It seems to be a letter, but and it seems to be a letter, and thanks, and thanks to the goddesses, it is. A, and thank the goddesses, it is addressed to me. It reads, Eli, my boy, my only hope is that if you find this, found this letter, you made your way back to home safely. I'm sure you're aware of it, but things got out of hand pretty quickly. Some knights came the other day, other day to deliver a letter and some money from you. I'm not sure why you did it or even how you did it, but I want you to know that I trust you. I'm aware of your goals and aspirations, and I know you're a smart kid, so if becoming the king's retainer is what you need to accomplish them, so be it. I will always have your back. Although I wish you would have told me before blowing up an entire house. In any case, I really appreciate the money. I would like, yeah. I would like to tell you that I will use it to improve the shop. But given the circumstances, it seems I go. I'll have to use it for another trip to the forest. I see, a few days after you left, I spotted a few cloaked figures inspecting the shop. They've been here three times already, and one day one of them came in asking a few questions about you. Of course, I didn't talk, but now I worry about my safety, so I'm leaving the shop tonight. I'll go to our recorded destination and wait for you there. I'll dig, out the, I'll dig out the heart and keep it safe. If I must, I'll throw it in the sea as we agreed. I'll wait for you in there as long as I need to. But please, ease this old man's worries and send me a letter with someone you trust. And don't you dare worry about me. It'll be fine. You take care of yourself. And for the love of the goddesses, stay safe. You're all I have left, and I don't want to lose you too, boy. Love you, kiddo. Petey, you never told me what you wanted for your birthday, so I got you a new travel diary. I'm sure you'll live a lot of I'm sure you'll live a live a lot of new adventures from now on, so make sure to write them all here, so I can read them once we meet again. Oh. Hey, at least he's still he's still alive. I dropped the letter on the floor. Feeling my eyes starting to tear up, I hold the book closer to my chest as if it was a replacement for the hug I so desperately needed. Why? Why did I have to get the old man involved in all this? I'm such an idiot. I'm the worst son anyone could ask for. You're a fool. Yes. I am. You'll be the reason for his death. 
I will. And then you'll be all alone. <coughs> ah, man. Ooh. Oh, man, it takes a little doing to do that voice. Ooh, okay. Mm. And I'll die alone. Indeed. I start to cry. My legs give up on me and I end up on the floor. Screaming wouldn't solve a thing, but I really want to do that. Punching something wouldn't help either, but I feel like breaking everything around me. The voice in my head keeps on talking, injecting negative thoughts inside of me, but this time I feel like I deserve it. I'm such a scumbag. A piece of trash that doesn't deserve happiness. I don't. Not one bit. You break everything you touch. You hurt everyone you know. Tell me. Why should someone like you be alive at all? I... I don't know. Why am I alive? Why is this happening to me? You know why. Yes. I do. It's all my fault, as I keep on messing up every time. Maybe I should... Maybe if I just... As my brain is about to take me even further down into the abyss, I hear a noise coming from one of the windows. It came from my room. I immediately composed myself and hide beside the doorframe, grabbing a candle that I found nearby and reading uh, and readying up for battle. The footsteps grow louder, and I even managed to hear a little humming out the other side. This person seems to be taking a sweet time checking out my room, but eventually I hear them stop in front of the door. Slowly the door creaks and opens. Nope. As soon as this person comes out, I hit him hard in the head with the candle. He stumbles back and I grab him by the collar, pinning him on the wall. And to feel my anger even more, I finally notice who he is. Ah! <laughs> you little shit, give me a fucking reason why I shouldn't break your neck right now! Huh, why? When did you come back? Boy, you should have told... A reason, Pat, a fucking reason! Why are you here? The guy squirms as I push him harder into the wall. I have one of my arms on his little neck while the other is holding the candle. I'm trying, I'm not, I'm trying not to force myself too hard on him, giving him room to breathe and talk. I was just uh, looking after the shop, of course. After all, no one was here. Uh, someone had to take care of things. You fucking liar, I swear I'll kill you, man, don't fuck with me! Okay, okay, I'm just here to loot, White, I swear. The, the, the place was empty, even the door was left open. You bastard, what happened here? I don't know, I don't know. Don't lie, Pat. I'm not, I'm not. I swear. Even if you say that, I don't think I can trust a rat like you. After all, you and I still have some unfinished business between us. What the f- why the fuck did you leave- why the fuck did you leave me there that day, huh? Why? If you had been keeping watch as you were supposed to, none of this would have happened. None of it! The little guy seems about to shit himself. He's trembling and won't even dare to look at me in the eye. I'm sorry, White. I swear I wasn't intentional. He's lying. I know. He's, he plotted against you and he made you suffer. He did. It was his fault that all of this happened. Yeah, you're right. It is his fault. He should suffer. He should. But pal, they're too tight. White, white. The rage inside of me starts to build up as a hellfire. Unable to stop it, I press his little fragile neck even harder. I want to hurt him so bad. I couldn't care less about what he has to say. I'm not even thinking clearly at this point. You want to kill him? I, I do. Then do it. Kill him. I'll kill you. I'll fucking kill you! I lift the candle in the air. All the rage, sorrow, fright, and loneliness that I have been feeling this past month, past month are gathering inside of me. I want to see him bleed. See him on the floor begging for his life. Make him suffer. Die. Ellie, stop. 
hear a callous voice coming from the door. <sighs> man, oh man, oh man, that took a lot out of me. Ooh, who knows those voices? Jeez. I look away from Pat and notice a frightened looking at Callus standing by the entrance of the shop. A grip on Pat lessens and his unconscious body drops on the floor. I look down and with fear I see that I see that the little guy is not moving. I take a few steps back. All the anger now turns into shame as I notice a callous' eyes judging me. No, stop! That wasn't me! That that leaning on the wall, I end up dropping on the floor. My legs are shaking and my head is starting to hurt a lot. I feel like all my body is burning and I can't help but feel out of breath. The wolf quickly runs to our side, but ignores me to check on Pat. He crouches beside him, placing two fingers on his neck. As he finishes, he sighs, rele he sighs relieved, and then looks back at me. He's alive, just unconscious. I, I, I didn't... My eyes soon start to tear up once more. I feel tired, stupid, and utterly broken. Oh, it's my fault, and I keep messing up over and over again. Ellie, what happened? I don't know, I, I just don't. Please, try. Those eyes of his, so judgy, so unfair. He wasn't there, he wouldn't understand. He wouldn't get it. I'm all alone. Ellie, please try. You can trust me. A callous's soft paw touches my shoulder and I finally get a good look at his eyes. Those aren't the eyes of someone who is judging you. Those are the eyes of someone who is worried and wants to help. So I just break. I start crying uncontrollably as I explained what happened. I tell him about the letter, the intrusion, the overwhelming anger, what happened with Pat before and why I hated him so much. I just spoke and spoke until I couldn't speak anymore. And the wolf, he just... listened. He didn't say a thing. He didn't judge me or blame me. He just sat there listening to my story. And at the end of it, when all my tears stopped, he offered me his handkerchief. Here, wipe your, te wipe your tears and let's get out of here. He'll be fine, just a little sore. Better not be here when he wakes up. I nod and try to get up, but my knees feel weak and I just go back to the floor. Here, let me help you. The wolf wraps my arm around his shoulder and helps me stand up. Then we just leave everything behind us. The shop, Pat, and the anger. Oh man, that was heavy. To make a- what? No. Is that seriously it? Is that seriously it? Really? Oh my god. Be continued. Oh. Oh, that's cute. Oh, a homan. Wait. <laughs> um, I think you have the wrong dialogue choice. That was an almond. You're such a dumbass, but we love you anyway. So, what do you what did you think? Oh, man. Do you like what Almond and Eli's were like? That's, uh... That's a callus, man. <laughs> Unless, uh, yeah. So I think that Almond actually has more. Huh. Do you like where Almond and e e Ellie's relationship is going? Do you have any theories for future chapters? Any thoughts on the new characters? Ooh. Don't forget that I'm always happy to hear all your comments. In the Ho- in the Hoa Discord. <laughs> so consider joining if you haven't already. Also, if you want to support me in the project, yes guys, please go support the Patreon if you can. This game is awesome. I am eternally grateful to all of my patrons for supporting me. So give it a go if you can. Big shout out to the new member of the Hoa team, Captain- Captain Von Rijen himself. Rijen? Rijen? Ryden. Has been helping me with all my shortcomings in English and with coding. Without his constant support, this update wouldn't be possible, and I'm looking forward to keep working with him. Great, thanks. Thanks. You made me. Okay. You guys rock. Oh, talking about the Codex, did you like it? Did you read it? Do you consider it a necessary addition to the game, or do you or do you don't, don't care for it? Codex, that's right. There's a Codex. In any case, it was a lot of work, and I'm quite proud of it, actually. So yeah, that's all I have to say for now. As always, consider following me on Twitter. Yeah, I think I'm already following him. Yep. Have a great day and a wonderful Halloween season. Hey, you too. Don't worry. Don't forget to wear a spooky costume. Love you all. So let's go to the. Wait, how do you get to the Codex? That's what I'm wondering about. I'd like to see the Codex. Down, 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 down. Okay. Hey, if someone can 
tell me about the Codex. Oh, I wonder if the Codex is solely on uh, Almond's path right now. Huh. All right, then. Well, I guess that about wraps it up for here. I guess I shall be uh, focusing on Almond the next play. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks, or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!